Let's hear it for Steve Zimmer. Steve? Three years ago, I'm on the subway and I see a sign from New York Teaching Fellows. It says, you remember your first grade teacher's name. Who will remember yours? <laughs> now, normally I like judgmental signs, but <laughs> this one almost seems kind of mean. But it's relevant to me because I've been asked to speak to a class of kindergartners. The request came from one of the kindergartners. His name is John, and he's my girlfriend Lori's son. When you're d you date someone with kids, sometimes you feel like a second-class citizen in, in their family. But even though John's father lives in New York, uh, he and I really connect, and, and he looks up to me. Sometimes when we're out, people say something like, your daddy should dress you warmer. <laughs> or you should tell your daddy that shoving won't make the line go any faster. <laughs> but, but John never tells them that I, I'm, I'm not actually his dad. He's a cool kid, and a relationship's very important to me. But it's also the source of a lot of anxiety because I feel like I have to be twice as good as his real dad. I, 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 share, I share these feelings with, uh, with, with, with his mom, Lori, and she says, it's not a competition. So I, I'm like, well, either she's kidding or, or trying to start a fight. But, <laughs> but then I'm like, no, no, you're right. It's not a competition. And uh, so... John's uh, kindergarten class at the Manhattan New School has this thing where an interesting adult they know uh, comes to the class and tells them about what they do. Uh, John picks me, and uh, I'm a computer programmer, which uh, kids find fairly interesting if they're nine and it's the 1970s. <laughs> the, uh, but, but Lori says, well, you don't have to talk about your job. You can just tell them, tell them about uh, glass making. Uh, glass making used to be a big hobby of mine, and I, I still have a small kiln in New York. So I figure I'll show them how to do fusing, which is where you, um, it's, it's like glass blowing in that you cut up the glass and then uh, melt it together to form a molten shard. But then instead of filling it with air, you manipulate it with uh, tools or gravity. And I figure we can make something for the classroom, like, like an ashtray or a votive. <laughs> now, Lori says, uh, sounds great, you know, just don't burn down my kid's school. And Lori feels I have responsibility issues. Um, fortunately, you know, she expresses them in a supportive manner. So I, I really want this, this to go well. So I show up there, and there, there's about 20 kids in the class, and, you know, they give me a little ovation, and, uh, and John's like, woo-woo, you know, I'm like, yeah. And, and uh, um, it's, it's a cute classroom. There's, there's a long wooden shelf in the back. Uh, and there's this uh, a big terrarium, uh, and it, it holds these uh, two little green lizards named Molly and Desmond. Uh, John himself picked out the names uh, from the Beatles' Oh Bloody song. Um, Lori, who, who plays the guitar, had, had turned him on to it. And uh, so I get all my tools laid out, and I notice that I'm missing my thermal gloves. So Eve, the teacher, says, oh, I'm sure I can get, get a pair out of the uh, lab in the middle school. You know, and, she, and, she, and she runs off, and I continue setting up. I, I set the kiln to reach 1,700 degrees in, in 12 minutes. And the, the lights start flickering. Now, in this situation, you should uh, turn the kiln off immediately. But I don't want to look stupid. So uh, I let it run, and... Uh, Two minutes later, the, 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 the lights go out. And the, for some reason, the shades are drawn, so the room is completely black, except for the orange glow of the kiln. So I hear the kids right away start chattering, and, uh, and I hear a chair scrape, and I'm worried someone, you know, they're going to walk around and someone's going to bump into the kiln. And so, so I, I, I say, everyone, sit down and be quiet. <laughs> and so that works. And uh, I say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to shout. Don't worry, the lights will come on soon. Everything's going to be okay. 
And then I realized when the power comes on, I don't want my kiln plugged in. Um, so, you know, and I can't, but in the dark, I can't quite see the outlet. So I'm kind of following the cord back and I start pulling on it and it's really resisting. And finally it gives really sharply and a huge glass thing shatters on the floor. And I say two words, shit, shit. <laughs> it, it was the terrarium and, uh, <laughs> I've just killed Molly and Desmond. So... The, the kids have got to be scared, so, so I say, don't worry, Molly and Desmond are okay. I'm sorry for using bad words. Uh, we should never do that. Um, don't worry, the lights will come on soon. Everything will be okay. And now, listen, little kids don't like it when adults get mad, but they understand, you know, it happens. What really upsets them is if you go back and forth between exaggerated niceness and angry screaming, and there's... There's a couple of sniffles in the back of the room, and then I hear some, some kid just start singing, shit, 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 shit. <laughs> and, then, and then there's a, a third sound. It's crickets. And it turns out I, I didn't knock over the terrarium. I knocked over this old-fashioned uh, glass fishbowl that was covered where they were growing crickets to feed Molly and Desmond. So now the crickets are free, and they're nocturnal, so... For them, it's the age of Aquarius. <laughs> and just then, Eve comes back with the gloves. And she's been gone four, five minutes. And she opens the door. The room's black. Children are crying. There's insects everywhere and some kids singing about shit. The only thing missing is a goat nailed to a crucifix. So... You know, I'm like just really embarrassed in front of Eve and, and John, and so I, I try to take charge. And, and I'm like, Eve, the electricity failed. Uh, for, forget about the gloves. I need you to go and, and flick the breaker for room number 18. You know, just in case she doesn't know the room where she teaches. <laughs> and Eve says, I think I should stay here. And in the dark, I see her, you know, punching numbers on the cell phone, and she makes a couple calls, and the power comes on, like, two minutes later. Um, they evacuate the room. M most of the kids are okay. And, and you know, I'm, I'm, like, helping clean up, you know, and capture crickets, and he's like, you know, thank you so much. You know, you, you don't have to do this. We're, we're, we're good. Um, why, don't, why don't you go back to work? Uh, apparently, if they can't send you to the principal's office, then they send you to your office. The, the feedback from my presentation is discouraging. <laughs> a few of the kids tease John about me, and a, a lot of the parents become upset after the shit song explodes in popularity. <laughs> and John stops letting people think I, I'm his dad. Uh, Lori and I break up five months later. It's over a different incident, uh, although there were parallels. <laughs> so I, I failed my tests as, as a father figure, as a boyfriend, even as a responsible adult. But I can tell you this. The people at the Manhattan News School will remember my name. Thank you. <laughs> Steve Zimmer.